Oh, there we go. Hey. Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to the 2013... Sorry, 2014. So used to the aircon tournament. March 2014, 1v1 tournaments. These are now a monthly thing, alternating between 1v1 and 2v2. So March is going to be 1v1. And see, there's... Much like, much like last time, there are 16 players. Once again, our first match is going to be between Lori and Kmar. I mean, iced coffee is all first on matches, and we shall begin now. So, Kmar starting in the south side of the map, going shields, while Lowry starting it in the north side of the map, not yet choosing any factor. Going for shields as well. And Commander Junior for Kmar, with Lowry going for a battle commander. According to the name, has beam laser. We'll find out whether or not it does soon enough. Now, Kmar is... A player I actually haven't seen a whole lot of. Lowry, I mean, Lowry, I think he got third or somewhere around the area in the first 1v1 tournament, and he is a really strong player. Kmar, on the other hand, I haven't really seen what he's doing, so I'd say this match, Lowry is the favorite to win between the two of them. But we'll see what Kmar pulls off. Let's see what he comes up with. Getting very quick radar as well. Lowry not getting radar, not quite... Oh, he is getting radar as well. Both players... Let's see. Lowry is the only one with... Energy off his commander. Kmar has to actually build some energy plants. He has eight off the commander because there was a change recently. All commanders now have plus four metal, plus four, plus eight energy per second. E cell adds another six, so we get 14 for this. So Lowry right now is 14 energy on his commander. So a commander snipe would actually do a lot of damage. And actually, commander snipes do do a lot more damage than they used to. That being said, neither player is going for air, so a comp snipe is going to be fairly difficult to pull off this early in the game. Both players going for shields. Bandits coming up for Lowry. Bandits coming up for Kmar. Actually, no, that's it. Bandits and convicts for Lowry. Bandits and roaches as well for Kmar. So Kmar looks like he's expecting he's probably going to need a bit more in the way of crowd control, which is not something to really take lightly. In good micromanagement is really a difference between winning and losing in a raider fight, and the best way around having to have good micromanagement, I'm not sure what Kmar's mechanics are like at all, but a great way around that is to use... Riots or Roaches. Now the problem with most Riot units is that they're quite slow, and especially with Outlaws, they basically don't deal a whole lot of damage, but Roaches! Roaches will just tear apart an entire army easily, especially if they're in place beforehand. And on a map like Iced Coffee, there are a lot of choke points that a Roach would be very, very powerful in. It looks like it's going to be picking right above this hill. Now this hill is bot pathable. These areas of the water are not, so these are all choke points, but this hill is bot pathable, and that's going to be something... Which basically would be the best approach route for Lowry at this point. Admittedly, that's why the Roach is there. But yeah, the fact that it's wide open gives him a lot more room to work with. A lot more room to micro around his raiders with. And looks like a battle is possibly starting. The Lowry is just scouting around, making sure the Kmar isn't anywhere too dangerous. Kmar did have a scout bandit to the northwest, just in case these two metal spots over here were taken. Which they haven't been yet. Lowry does have a slight metal advantage, but not by much. Kmar is getting... Bit more metal in zone, and Lowry losing a bandit, so both players pretty much even. Nothing too exciting has happened so far, but Lowry is pushing in, trying to take out one of Kmar's bandits. Kmar, however, going over that hill. Looks like he's trying to try to lure. He is trying to lure Lowry into that roach. That roach is coming up, and it might be too close, but no, it's fine. There we go. Three bandits out for a roach. The other two bandits killed by the commander. K Lowry's entire army knocked out right at the start. Kmar taking an early lead and taking a massive lead for energy. Admittedly, this is wind generators, but. This map is quite tall here, so the wind generators should work out. I'm not sure what their minimum is. 0 0.8 looks like possibly their minimum. That's still fairly cost-effective compared to wind generators. Sorry, to solar collectors. Solar collectors are double the cost, but produce two energy, whereas 0 0.8 isn't terribly bad, given that they're going to speed up at some point. Anyway, at this point, economy is fairly even. Lowry realizing that he really wants to go for his own roaches as well, so... Getting that set up, and he's also actually a bit behind on economy. Kmar taking the really heavy mechs. There's, should I point out, there's two metal extraction spots to the east and to the west in the center of the map that are three and a half metal each compared to two for the rest of them in the map. Hard to hold, but very powerful if you can. Kmar has grabbed one of them. He's getting an early metal lead as a result. And at this point, both players have 20 metal income. It looks like neither of them are quite focused too heavily on assist. Lowry is assisting Kmar. Actually, Kmar is assisting quite a lot. He's got a caretaker as well. So he's really pushing hard this assistance in his factory. And moving into Thug, probably going to move into Thug Felon Ball pretty soon. Lowry, on the other hand, a bit slower on that. Still keeping with Bandits. 
Now, Kmart does have a lot more in the way of army, but his army is actually... Well, 7 to 5, two of his bandits are damaged. Lowry regrouping once again and trying to make sure that there isn't an easy way for Kmart to get in. Kmart, what is he aware of? He is aware of this entire army. He's aware of these defenses. He's aware that stuff is here. And Lowry, on the other hand, is aware that Kmart has taken this metal spot. And I think Kmart is aware that Lowry has not taken his own. Let's see. Yeah, Kmart is definitely aware that Lowry has not taken the west side metal spot. Thugs coming in with a roach support. That roach will actually hurt Kmart more than it hurts Lowry. That is not helpful. Also making that water too, so the thugs even slower. Knocking out what little land existed. But Bandit's coming in to try to deal with this. However, they are not going to work out too well. They have to retreat. And Lowry's... Lowry's Rogue coming in, sorry, Roach coming in, getting rid of a huge chunk of Kmart's army. Kmart is a bit further back from where he was, but this bandit moving through the water, that did not help it at all, but still got through, still killed that particular thug. But Kmart at this point does have basically an economic lead, but Lowry does have a lot of reclaim to work with. And Kmart unfortunately lost a lot of his bandits, his thugs basically have no support at this point. Sending in some bandits to try to help out, but really not enough. These thugs are going to do what they can, but Lowry at an advantage thanks to the use of the Kmars. That is going to be very effective. And that is going to be... I mean, thugs really do not do well against bandits. That's the thing. They bandits just too fast. We micro around too easily. And Lowry clearly knows how to micro around his bandits. Where is... Well, there's that felon. That's what I was looking for. The Felon is coming. Lowry does have that set up. He's going to get thugs pretty soon as well. No Felon coming up for Kmar. Rogues instead. Rogues also not great against Bandit spam, though. Against the inevitable Felon spam, they are pretty much what is going to be there. That's what Kmar has to deal with this. Actually, Racketeers would be a better option. Racketeers would be great in this case. But he is not building them. He's building Felons and Bandits instead. Double check. Does he have a Roach nearby? No, it doesn't look like any roaches are up for either player, actually. No, neither player is going for roaches. Both players are just focusing heavily on more frontal assault units. Lowry moving in towards the east expansion here, but going to be pushed off by a Stardust. Not going to help him too much. Lowry over his commander getting hit hard by rogues. I think the commander is going to be taking not too much damage. It's running away. The laser turrets are in the way. The rogues aren't going to try to take that too quickly. And Thug Felon Ball coming in to deal with this. This is where it's going to become a problem for Kmar. The, th the Felon coming in. Actually, the Felon doesn't have a whole lot of shield energy to work with. Just one Thug, and that's not going to help it too much. I think the bandits should actually be able to get in and deal with this pretty effectively, but not enough bandits. That's the thing. He needs more bandits. He's also getting Thugs of his own again. Kmar, that is, getting Thugs of his own. But Lowry, as you can see, has taken most of the map. Lowry right now has... A small economic lead in metal. That's really where it counts right now. Power, yes, there is a lead for power for Kmar, but he doesn't have enough he doesn't have energy in reserve to actually get overdrive working. I mean, these metal extractors are overdriving a little bit, but not as much as they would be based on the amount of wind generators nearby. And about to meet Thug Felon versus or Thug and Felon versus a bunch of thugs, a bunch of bandits. But that felon just tears apart bandits with Really no delay. Those bandits do not have a chance. Thugs have a small chance because of the fact that they do have shields on them. But even then, Convict's being used to try to recharge the shield ball. Possibly also to repair, but charging the shield ball is definitely a thing they can do. Convict's also going to the east side for Kmar. Looks like he's, he's trying to get a, wow, a stinger right next to Lowry's entire expansion here. At the same time, Lowry is patrolling around. He doesn't want to completely focus on anything right now. He's regrouping his units. Looks like he's going to go for the felon ball that we were expecting before. He has two felons, by the way. Two felons, about five thugs, no, six thugs. This is going to be scary to deal with, especially since Kmar has gone so heavily for bandits. No racketeers. Roaches wouldn't be super effective, but they if they were planted in the right spots, they might actually work. But still, racketeers would be a thing to go for. No more rogues, just pure bandit, just hoping that he's going to be able to get through the felons, or the survivors are going to get through. Not sure how well it's going to work, and the stinger just about done, though. Another stinger in the center of the map, that is... That's going to be somewhat useful. I mean, it's not going to be the most useful, it's mostly going to drain shields. The bandit's coming in, the thing that's going to drain shield the most, of course, is felon attack, and the felon attack, however, has done its job getting rid of so many bandits as a result. Now, at the same time, bandits are on the east side of the map, tearing apart Lowry's expansion. The center over, Lowry is coming in strong with the felons, though. 
the Felon's out of shield energy. Looks like that Stinger actually may have done part of its job, and now able to actually deal damage. That Stinger... No, that might actually be useful. Stinger should be able to kill one of those Felon... No, not quite! Felon got out of range right before the Stinger would have killed it. Stiletto, however, coming in from Lowry, he switched to air. Well, added air on top. Getting a Stiletto, looks like he's going to take out these bandits, or try to disarm the bandits. Only able to disarm half of them, I'm afraid. Now that's the thing, an air switch for Stiletto would also be a really good idea for Kmar right now. To tear apart the Felon Ball, that would deal with it. But he's not going for it, I don't really know why. It's... I mean, it is kind of scary to go for a bit of a fact switch like that, but... I think, really, against this army, it's... There isn't much he can do other than Racketeers or a fact switch to air. He does have a very strong economy, though. Getting wind generators around the map everywhere... Actually, possibly a little too close. Now, his wind generators should be fine. If they explode, they won't blow each other up, I think. But they are quite close, and even that's going to be easy to stop... Actually... Stun coming in from the center, the Felon Ball is going to be able to get through these stingers and a bunch of thugs in the back try to support this, but that's not going to help out too much. It's not going to probably, well, actually, might last for 10 seconds. The shield energy is very low, drained by the Felon attack. And at the same time, stingers coming in, not that handy. Kmar Stinger is not that useful against bandits. Bandits really are going to be too numerous for the Stinger to help that much. Stinger's much better against larger, smaller targets or fewer targets that are larger, rather than a bunch of small targets like the bandits. Because I realized I said larger, smaller targets, and that's a complete contradiction in terms. No, larger and fewer in number targets. Now, lotuses, that's what you want against things like bandits, or a bunch of bandits. Vert Convict Spam coming in to try to push in a lot of metal into Anarchid's factories. Anarchid, oh, sorry, Lowry's factories. I'm not saying Anarchid. Anarchid's the, the organizer here. Thank you, Anarchid, for organizing this tournament. But he's not playing, because he's the organizer. I don't know why I was thinking of him right now. Lowry is the one who's playing to the north. And Lowry is getting mass reclaim. Trying, no, Kmar's getting mass reclaim. Lowry's trying to push a bunch of metal into his factories. Kmar, however, mass reclaim and losing a lot of metal. He's getting caretakers to try to use this up, but he doesn't have a lot of convicts in his base to actually make use of this. However, Lowry does have a lot of defense along the side here, only really to protect what metal he has left. Admittedly, he has a lot of metal still, but... So much reclaim coming in for Kmar. I mean, he's denying reclaim for Lowry, but he's not using all of it himself. He's using 40 metal right now and getting 60 in the bank. He's He is accessing metal hard, and if anything's going to cost him the game at this point, it's that. Granted, he is building stingers as well, getting that around the map, trying to make sure that he's got a solid defensive position. There is still that stiletto running around, I believe. Or, no, maybe not. The stiletto appears to have been gone. So it looks like stilettos are no longer a concern, but... Even with that, there is still the concern of the Felon Ball. Admittedly, the Bandits are probably a bigger concern right now. They're going to get through that Stinger. The Felon Ball could easily follow them up. And actually, looks like right now, Lowry's focused more on this Nuke Silo, not really focused heavily on building a whole lot of Felon Ball stuff. He is, however, going in for the attack, getting in for the kill with the Bandits. Going to be able to kill that Commander, no problem. But, oh, that Commander does heavily damage the Stinger. Now, the Stinger should be able to get rid of the Felon and heavily weaken the Felon Ball as a result. There goes that one Felon. The Bandits getting damaged by Bandit support from Kmar and the Convicts for basically repairing each other at this point. But more Felon Ball coming in at the same time. The east side of the map, we do have a bunch of thugs going along. Looks like they're going to try to get the back door on Lowry's base. Lowry has to retreat from that Stinger. It's not going to work out with just one Felon. Actually, no Felons. Though the bandits are really what you want to use against the Stinger, but yeah, all the felons have been destroyed. Lowry right now has zero felons in play. It should be noted that no felons exist any longer for Lowry. He does have a decent thug ball, but nowhere near what Kmar has. I think Kmar, he definitely has an offensive advantage, and Lowry looking, he's going to go for the back door, but a Stinger was already in place to deal with this just in case it happened. Not going to be enough, though, but a Roche, nicely done. A Roche in an optimal location. Just needs to hold fire. No! The Roche is moving in, and that outlaw is going to possibly kill it. No, it's getting it! It's only going to kill one thug. That's all it's going to do. Kill one thug. Not great. Might have been better just keep it at the bottom there. However, Bandit's coming in from Kmart. Not really going to do much either. The big thing is what he's going to do with this thug ball, and I'm a bit surprised he hasn't actually used it yet. Not gone out the back door. This area is bot-pathable. This is a ramp that bots can go up, so it's... It's a valid back door. I'm a bit surprised he hasn't used it yet. However, Kmart is still pushing a lot of metal... Not pushing enough metal into his factory. 
I'm a bit surprised he hasn't built a second factory on air or something, or just built more caretakers, because he needs more. He has more convicts, but those convicts are just basically going to the center of the map and grabbing reclaim, which is going into excess. Kmart's one weakness this entire game has been accessing metal and th thug attack in the north. How did I miss that? But Roach coming in to try to deal with it. The Roach, however, completely wasted. As is that Stardust to an extent. So it looks like Kmar went for a bit of an assault, didn't manage to do too much. Lowry, however, also didn't manage to do too much, and neither player really dealing a whole lot of damage right now. And Kmar really does have an economic advantage. He's just not pushing it as well as he could be. Now this is where it's going to make a difference. Napalm missiles coming up for Lowry. He's going to try to turn this around with the Napalm missiles. And if he succeeds, it's going to be a matter of positioning because Kmart going in for an attack, trying to go for the kill at this point. There are no thugs behind. Nothing really is going to come back door Kmart at this point. Just going for the frontal assault. Roach creating more of a choke. I should possibly cutting off the choke point completely. And we are going to be seeing fairly powerful force here, but Kmart's force needs to retreat. Fairly powerful force coming in here from Lowry, and it looks like... Where's that artillery coming from? That's... What the heck? Okay, well anyway, Napalm Missile is coming up from... You're going to the main base, and setting a lot of Kmart stuff on fire. Kmart at the same time destroying quite a lot of Lowry's power and metal infrastructure, so Lowry losing everything he had on the southwest side of the map. Kmar, however, taking heavy damage to the main base, losing all of his, all of his well, wind generators on the inner side. The outer side just barely survived. The factory will be fine. The caretaker's taking a lot of damage, but repairing each other, keeping themselves alive. Ah, there we are, Behemoth. Oh, wow, I actually didn't expect that to be built ever. But yes, Behemoth has been built for Kmar. That is not a unit we see very much of. One of the really high-end special units that you basically don't ever get. I just point out it's special tab. It's one of these one of these high cost static emplacements that you see from time to time but very rarely. I don't think I've ever seen one in a 1v1 game actually. So this is a bit surprising. Granted both players have had such high economy. I'm not surprised Kmar went for that. And Kmar now assaulting the main base here once again getting a lot of metal out. Not going to the factories though and this napalm missile Staying there, Lowry not really using it too much. I'm a bit surprised he hasn't gone for center here or gone for where the army is, because that would deal a lot of damage. The main base, it's an okay target, but really you'd want to have nukes for that. And the attack nuke would be a better option for that than Napalm. But once again, Napalm coming into the main base, setting a lot of stuff on fire, but not that effective, I'm afraid. However, felons are coming in once again for Lowry. He has his felon ball built up, coming up against a thug convict ball. Lowry's commander about to go down, though. It's actually going to be a fairly big blow. Half of his energy income is in his commander, and it's going down just about, there we go, gone down. Very few thugs died. It looks like they were on the right side of that hill. And Felon Ball not able to do too much against the thugs. The shields really counter that. And thug flank from both sides. Poor Kmar will be finishing this off. I think Louder's going to throw in the towel after this fight. His main base, all he has really is the missile silo going for him. And this fight is... Gone to Kmar. Kmar wins game one. So Lowry down 1-0 against Kmar. Nicely done, Kmar. So we'll have game two once that starts up. But yeah, Lowry is down 1-0. Very nicely done to Kmar there. So we'll be back shortly. Stay tuned. Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 33 with Game Two of Lowry versus Kmar in the March 2014 1v1 tournament. So, first game was a convincing win by Kmar. Actually, it's a pretty even game, but Lowry ended up losing ultimately. Kmar ended up winning. So, Game Two of Kmar wins this. He is moving on to fight whoever wins between Pro Silencer and Pair. Or sorry, Silencer and Pair. Otherwise, he is going to be trying to do Game Three. So, we're on Red Comet. And game has started. Lowry going for light vehicles. No surprises there. Same with Kmar. A couple darts coming out for Kmar with... No, one dart. Then three Scorchers. Two darts for Lowry. Looks like he's going a bit more heavy raiding. Two darts and a Scorcher first. While one dart and a Mason. Then a few Scorchers. So it looks like Kmar is planning on going for 
Just a bit of scouting, followed by macroing up, and then maybe going for a calm dive with the three Scorchers. But Lowry, on the other hand, looks like he's going for a bit more raiding early on. Lowry upgraded to Beam Laser, E-Cell, and Kamar once again with Commander Junior. Really does not want to use any special commander, but... Lowry is... Getting up early radar, getting up early mechs. He actually only has two mechs early on. As does Kamar, but Kamar is because of his starting location. He started far away from any three mech spots. While... Which probably was from mind games. While Lowry, on the other hand, started right next to three mech spots, so he's... Well, he's going to get his three, his three metal extractions a bit faster. That is one thing. And a Scorcher here as well to possibly help out with support against that dart. Looks like Kamar actually not going for a calm dive. He's simply... At least not yet. He doesn't have the third Scorcher. When that comes up, we'll know what he's up to. If he does go for a calm dive with that, that will be pretty big, too. Because Lowry, he does have 16 energy coming... Or, sorry, 14 energy coming out of his comp. That's his entire energy income at the moment, in fact. He has no power plants whatsoever. So if this commander goes down, Lowry's going to net an easy win and get into round two. Well, I'll get into the quarterfinals. There's the round of 16 right now, but... Yeah, the... Kamar wants to go for that, and it looks like he might be just doing that. He has two Scorchers coming in. He's going to need three. He is going to need all three of his Scorchers to do this. Possibly get more as well, and he's going to need them all at once. One of his Scorchers is going to the north. I'm not sure. He knows where Lowry is. He, he does know where he is, but he doesn't know where his commander is exactly. He does not know that the commander is right next to a Lotus. That's going to be huge. This, these two Scorchers are not going to do much. Looks like they might just be into scouting for us, in fact. And, well, that... Laser turret is not going to be that effective, I'm afraid. Oops. However, what is going to be effective is five Scorchers, if he goes for it. He does have enough, and he's going for more Scorchers from the north. Going for a bit of a raid from here, this is going to be effective. Assuming he, micros he has to micro the Scorcher properly. He's not doing a terrible job. Is it going to work? Oh, very close. Neither player quite losing their Scorchers, but Lowry loses his first just out. Not able to get there. One mech's down for Lowry and the Scorcher as well. Very nice Scorcher Micro from Kmar. Scorcher Micro's a little bit tricky. You have to kind of weave around to avoid the heat rays while dodging away from your opponent. A lot of Micro in 0k involves retreating while firing and making full advantage of the move while fire properties of the game. You have to retreat while firing and make sure that your turret isn't moving too slowly. You can't turn too quickly, otherwise the turret cannot... Because each unit has a turret on top of it. Like this little thing here. That's the turret. And... If that turret is moving, most turrets move slower than the rotation rate of the unit. So you got to make sure that you're not turning the unit too quickly. However, Kmar does have enough Scorchers for a dive. He is going for it, however. Enough Scorchers from Lowry. Take out a Scorcher for free with the Lotus with support. Three Scorchers, however, in the north. Kmar not repairing these. Okay, now he's repairing them. He needs to have those healthy because he needs all the Scorchers he can get. He's going to go for a calm dive. Now he himself looks like he is a bit worried. He's got Stardust next to his commander. He's building most of his metal with his mason, so he's not trying to expand too heavily with the commander, though. He does want to have it forward enough to repair these Scorchers. Now, Lowry's commander, actually in a really vulnerable spot. This would be a perfect timing for a Scorcher dive. However, it looks like Kmar is mostly focused on defense. He's a bit paranoid about getting hit, and it's kind of hard for Scorchers to fight each other in defense. And like I said, retreat really matters. Matters a great deal. Lowry's Scorcher basically was not damaged at all, while Kmar's Scorcher was nearly killed. But Kmar not going for the dive, and this would be the perfect time. He needs to go for that dive, but he is not doing it. I'm not sure if he's aware of that. At the same time, he is holding off an attack from Lowry, but what does he have for vision? No, he does not know where the commander is. The commander is not in position. Once Lowry, however, expands a bit further in, it's going to be a different story. However, also a different story... Solar Collectors have been built, so the timing for being very powerful to do that comm snipe has passed. Like, Lowry would still lose half of his economy if his commander died, but it's not going to be all of his economy as it was two minutes ago. And yes, two minutes ago. Zero case, it's fast. But if you're watching this, I'm sure you know that already. Anyway, yeah, this is going to be quite... Well, quite an interesting Scorcher-heavy game. Red Comet tends to be fairly Scorcher-heavy. Nice micro coming in from Lowry again. Kmar's not really luring his Scorcher in. And it looks like a flank coming in from Lowry. These two Scorchers are not going to have an easy time getting out of here. And Kmar's commander is the one who's out in the open. Granted, Kmar is relying a lot less on his commander for his economy, but still. Kmar's commander very much out in the open. Kmar's base is also open. It's got one laser turret, but the wind generators would all die before that laser turret does its job. Kmar's commander is 
Very vulnerable. Half a dozen Scorchers going to the north, but... Okay, one Scorcher's not going to be enough. You need to have three at least. And Lowry's commander still at level one. Not going to be taking too much damage if it does get hit, but... The six Scorchers from the top are going to be doing quite a lot of damage. Not raiding this mechs. Not sure if he's aware of it. I don't think he... No, he's not aware of it. I know he's not because he doesn't have radar at this point. However, he is going to check regardless, and he is going to find it. So, Lowry not able to keep his economic advantage. Both players have been even in economy pretty much this entire game. They are very evenly matched. This has been a very exciting series so far. As a result, however, Kmart is building Stardust around them, trying to keep the Scorchers somewhat contained. And at this point, Kmart knows about the Commander. He knows exactly where the Commander is, or at least he should. He is getting Levelers, not focusing much on Scorchers, but... Those levelers should be fine for defense. Now what he needs to do is pull these Scorchers down, get rid of this commander. That's going to be a huge blow against Lowry. Now Lowry right now does have a lot of power plants coming in. He is going for an air switch as well. He has nothing planned right now. Probably going to go for shadows. Four shadows will kill a commander. That's likely to be his option because comp snipes are that powerful. Actually, Kmar, in fact, is much less... Well, it's a lot less power thanks to the fact that wind generators are not in high ground. There isn't a whole... I mean, Red Comet's very flat now. There's no high ground to really speak of at this point. So, that's the best you can really do. I mean, there's slightly higher ground, but not by much. Still, Kmar is really relying on the wind to help him out. Looks like Chainsaw is being built up, so he is going to have some defenses against the Shadows. The thing is, Shadows are much more useful as the early start. Like, going for four Shadows right at the start of the game is an easy way to take out Commanders. And that heavily damages your opponent's economy because they're relying on it a lot for early energy. Nice Scorcher attack, though, from Lowry. He is, well, getting rid of a Mason, getting rid of Metal Extractors. Now, Kmar is at a disadvantage here because Lowry is the run one, running away. Kmar is not in front of those Scorchers, so he can't really force them towards him. I mean, Lowry wants to go this wants to go th this way, and Kmar wants him to go this way. It's not going to work out. That aside, Kmar does have a nice position in the center of the map. He does need to move south, take out this area here. He has the forces to do it, but he has to make sure to defend. This Scorcher here is being a real thorn in his side. Very annoying for him, and doesn't matter though, able to get rid of it. Greater numbers against micromanagement, not going to help out the micromanagement. But at the same time, three laser turrets, the levelers would be okay here, but not... And it looks like he's going to go for that, however... Not a whole lot of leveler, levelers in play. Two in play compared to 15 Scorchers. Well, actually, most of the Scorchers are not Kmars. There are Lowry's. Lowry has probably about a dozen Scorchers at this point. And more for... Uh, Ravager's worth coming too, so we're going to see Ravager versus Leveler here. And Wolverines. Kmars really focused on getting territory control. He's not so focused on killing off anything. More focused on making sure he can keep what he has. But that being said, the Air Factory is up. Phoenix is coming up. Actually, Phoenix is Avengers and Shadows. Everything coming up. Lowry wants full air control at this point. He does not want to be in a position... Well, not that Kmart is pushing him into a position, but he does not want to be in a position where he could be hit from the air. His commander could go down. At this point, though, Lowry's a third of his economy, a third of his energy economy is invested in his commander, so he's actually in a pretty healthy spot. Commander sniping will not be that effective anymore. That being said, this chainsaw does exist. It is a thing. It's... Right now... Not going to be that useful. Not a whole lot of Aryans coming in yet. And these Scorchers could easily get rid of In fact, they are going to be able to tear apart this north side almost completely. Not a whole lot of resistance coming in from Kmar. Apparently his Scorcher Micro not... Well, as we can see so far, Scorcher Micro is not the best. Lowry, however, taking, her, taking apart his base one building at a time. And taking apart his factory. I think he's going to... I don't know. Kmar still has a chance after this, but it's going to be a disadvantage. Wolverine's coming in trying to take care of this base. I'm not sure if I would have gone for Wolverines compared to Impalers, because Impalers... Let's see, what do Impalers have for cost? Okay, Impalers do cost three times as much. That is one thing. But Wolverines take a lot longer to actually deal the damage they need to. Not to mention, their their mines can be eliminated. However, Chainsaw, nice use of Chainsaw there. Getting rid of the Napalm Bomber. Getting rid of the Phoenix before it does a whole lot. And that's not enough, though. Kmart is taking enough damage here. All of his Wind Generators to the north are down. His Wind Generators to the south are down. His Commander is... Giving him some stuff. Getting a spider factory in the center of the map. An odd choice. Possibly going for red... I don't know what he's doing there. Red pack maybe? I I don't know. Why would you go for spider? Okay, spider on this map is not a great idea, period. Like, there's some hills, some things you can use with it, but for the most part, spider does not help you. 
The only reason I can see maybe is like crab. It's a fairly powerful assault unit, but at this point, Lowry has such a massive army advantage. I don't see that's gonna help. Redbacks maybe, but nope, not gonna help out. Scorcher dive coming in here, gonna finish off the commander, and despite his best efforts, Kamar's gonna lose his commander, and with that, the game. Yeah, Spider Factory's going down, and Kamar throws in the towel. We're on to game three, one and one for each player. So game three, once the players decide what map to do it on, and until then, stay tuned. Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is game three of Lowry and Kmar after two very even games. First on Ice Coffee and second on Red Comet. Now, bit of news in one of the other games. Mighty Sheep and Vermine. Mighty Sheep has beaten Vermine 2-0 to move on to the quarterfinals. We probably won't see that for a while. I mean, I, I'm curious to see who's going to win. Probably Q-Bay between Q-Bay and Black Duchy. Whoever wins that fights Mighty Sheep. Once Lowry and Kamar are done, the winner fights Silencer or Pear, whoever wins that. I'm not sure how that's going right now. But we are going to be able to find out how the game between Lowry and Kamar is going because that has just started. Kamar is going for Shield Boss. It's on Ravage, by the way, one of my favorite maps. You can see very cliffy, very much choke point heavy map. Both Ice Coffee and Ravaged are kind of like that. So we're going to have... I mean, Kamar did a pretty good job last time with Ice Coffee, though I think... Part of that was bot micro. Kmar seems to be a lot better with bot usage than he was vehicle usage. Lowry, on the other hand, going for tanks, possibly relying on vehicle usage himself. He's he was doing really well in the iced coffee game, though. It really just came down to just good placement of defenses for for Kmar. Really, he just knew where to play stuff and avoided getting flustered by the felon ball. Really, that's what it came down to. And Lowry, on the other hand, last game he. I think he could have been Scorcher Dive. That's one thing. I think Kamar really could have gone for Scorcher Dive. But Lowry basically just had... Well, he had more stuff eventually. I mean, he just... He had better Scorcher Micro. That's a big thing. Scorcher Micro is very important. Micro in general is very important in this game. Because both players start out fairly even. And whoever keeps the units alive ends up with a larger army. Naturally. Lowry, however, going for early Panthers. Which is not surprising for a tank player. Especially on a map like this. He expects probably not to be able to get Kodachis all the way to the other side before a bunch of counterforces come up. However, Kmar... Kmar is focusing heavily on convicts first. He's expecting the map is large enough he doesn't have to worry about getting raided too early, and... Well, he's right. It's a good call on his part. I mean, Lowry expanding as well. It looks like Lowry's expanding a little bit slower than Kmar. Kmar getting some power structures as well. Once again, Kmar going for Commander Jr. Lowry going for a Recon Com with Light Park Beam and E-Cell. So, like I said before, all commanders have plus 4 metal, plus 8 energy as of version 1.2.3.2. This is 1.2.3.6, so it's obviously past that point. So yeah, recons, comms, battle comms, everything other than support comms is actually viable now. Support comms is no longer necessary in order to have a decent economy early on, which is great. I'm, I'm kind of glad by that. I mean, admittedly, I don't want comms to be too much of a focus, but at the same time, they were given a lot of priority, especially in the unlock system. I'm surprised that... The Econ thing wasn't noticed further, but yeah, that's been changed, so... Battlecom and Strikecom are useful, and Reconcom is interesting. It's weaker, but the jump ability is kind of handy, especially in a map this cliffy. If it weren't for the fact that Lowry is going for tanks, I almost wouldn't be surprised if he terraformed out. It blocked off some of the areas to prevent Kmar from moving around. That being said, Kmar would actually... Oh, well, Kmar's not going for... Well, Kamar could try to get a bunch of bot-only pathball ramps along the choke points, preventing the tanks from getting around. He probably won't do that. I doubt he's going to do that, but it'd be really cool if he did. You don't see terraforming very much in this game. It's a thing that exists, but it doesn't come up a whole lot. And Lowry and Kamar are just expanding. Neither player too concerned, neither player too worried about getting attacked by the other. They're just expanding out. So Kamar very quickly getting his caretaker. Lowry focusing more on using welders to build up stuff. And does have a weaker power infrastructure. That's one thing. Lowry has been relying a lot on his commander more for his power. Not nearly as much on power structures, while Kmart relying a huge amount on power structures, especially on wind generators. And on this map, at this height, wind generators are actually kind of useful. They're guaranteed useful. They're definitely more cost-effective than solar collectors, and it's a good idea to build them in this map. The only downside is they are kind of weak, 
If someone comes in with jumps or spiders, they can go along here and just jump up and take them all out. It nearly happened to me once, but thankfully I had defense turrets in place. And spiders coming up for Kamer. He's switching to spiders. Well, speak of the devil, there it is. Spiders are coming up for Kmart, so I would not be surprised. I'd almost not be surprised if we went for Terraform. Because spiders, of course, can just climb anything. But he's not apparently going for it. He's instead going for just a lot of units around the map. He's losing three bandits are gonna or two bandits are gonna go down at least. Possibly three. This band no, this bandit is getting repaired, so all but one bandit are gonna survive that encounter. More Kodachis, however, coming from Lowry. He's building up Kodachis, he's getting into Reapers. That's going to be tricky. Reapers are pretty much one-shot kills for most things, especially most econ buildings, but bandits should be fast enough to actually avoid the shells most of the time. Enough bandits is going to be hard to micro them. Like, Lowry, I think, is not going to have to worry too much about that. We'll see how Kmar's splitting micro works out. He's going to have to very effectively, not just use line move, but probably also split them up into smaller groups and then line move off of that. I should point out there is a road to this choke point that is going to be possibly important depending on how Lowry decides to move out and it looks like that is gonna be very important Lowry is gonna be lured into that roach if he's not careful bandits are trying to get him in there and yes the Kodachis are gonna go over to that roach Kmart do not lift that roach up too soon no he's lifting that roach up too soon ah should have let the vehicles come in granted it's not gonna be that big of a deal but no it is right there's actually bur persistent burn of the bandits Kmart losing all these bandits because he didn't wait for that roach to die oh that is painful that's gotta be painful for Kmar. Cause he had those Kodachis, but he didn't he didn't wait, didn't let the Roach come in. I think the Roach might not have been in hold position, actually. Probably double check that if the Roaches are in hold position or not. But that's gotta hurt, because those three Kodachis. Oh man, that's. That is painful. I. I gotta say, I feel for you, Kmar. That hurts. Lowry, on the other hand, getting air switch, as he always does. Getting more Reapers. It looks like he's just focusing heavily on Reapers. Just Reaper and Workers. And another Roach actually doing his job this time. Getting rid of two Kodachis. Or, wait, is that a Roach? Must have been. Looks like it got sniped off or tried to be sniped off, but the Kodachi did not survive that particular encounter. And Venom's coming in. It's going to be tricky. The Reapers have a ton of health, so the Venoms are not going to have an easy time stunning them out. Looks like the bandits are just going to try to get around this. Not even focusing on it too much. Focusing instead on trying to get rid of the commander. The Venom's stunning everything around it, but not hitting the commander itself and unfortunately stunning each other. That being said, Lowry trying to come in here with Venom's... Venom's in the way? That's not going to help out too much. The Reapers are probably the best choice he has, honestly. He's retreating with it. Looks like he wants to regroup. That's a good thing to do. Definitely something you want to do. Get out of there and... Ah. Newtons have been built up as well along this side for the air units. Wow, okay, well, that's a thing you can do. Now double check these roaches. No, the roaches are on hold. They are on hold fire. They are not on hold position. That's probably what it is. The roaches might be going off on their own automatically. So, Kmar might want to put those in hold position because very useful as mines. Or maybe hold position and not hold fire, and that would actually work. To work for them as landmines. But these Reapers, dealing quite a lot of damage, getting rid of a lot of these Venoms, but unfortunately, this one will be stunned out. And the second one coming in from the back to reinforce his partner, able to get rid of this Venom pretty easily, but not easily enough from the looks of it. And like I said, Bandits can dodge these without issue. Now at the same time, we do have Phoenixes built. They will be coming in here. They're going to be going for a strong... Oh, they're going to go for a strong attack. Venoms... Well, one of them dies. The rest of them are okay, but... These Reapers really dealing a huge amount of damage. The thing with the Venoms is that, yeah, they stun out, but they don't deal a whole lot of damage on their own. I'm surprised the Bandits are not in tow. There are Bandits coming in. I'm a little surprised no Thugs are coming in. Crab, however, is coming in. That's going to be a big thing once it comes in, but it also needs to get in position. Now, this Shadow not moving in the right direction for what... Well, what was expected. I, oh, whoops, the names are... You even notice, the names are completely borked. Okay, I apologize for that. Apparently, sometimes the player list wants to screw up on me. There we go. Did not notice that. Anyway, yeah, so Lowry... That's weird. The names were working. Beside the point. The point is, Lowry is trying to push in, but not doing that great of a job. The Shadow is doing what it can, trying to take care of this commander. But the commander getting quite reliably repaired, and there's that terraform. Kmar going for that terraform. That is... That's kind of big. I'm not sure why these Newtons are over here, though, not near the commander to try to take her out. Oh, there goes the commander. Ouch. 
Kamar loses that command at the end of the map. Not quite able to terraform out that choke point. Not terrible, but not great, and that's going to be painful. Now, that being said, Kamar still has a massive advantage. I mean, at this point, Lowry is trying to just work it out, trying to get rid of it, but really, slowly but surely, is not going to win the race at this point. Instead, Kamar really is just a matter of him not having a lot of units and that are great for countering this stuff. He has a lot of bandits, he has the Newtons, of course, he has a lot of Venoms, but nothing really that will get rid of these guys too easily. I mean, if he if he stuns them out and moves that Roach in, that might actually do the trick. But he's not using these Roaches at all. He's trying to get... Now trying to get anti-air. Scream at really high-value anti-air, too. I'm not sure why he's going for that. Chainsaw would be sufficient at this point. No, going for a Screamer instead. You have to build the missiles for those individually, by the way. Not going for Lowry's Commander. I think Kmart is starting to stall a bit. Not quite sure what to do from the looks of it. He's getting a lot of... Getting a lot of anti-air to take care of the Air Force, but he's starting to get flustered. I think he's... Might be getting confused as to what to do. I'm not sure why he's building this exact configuration. I'd be surprised... I'm surprised he's not going for a bit more heavy force, like Felon Ball or something like that against the heavy tanks. I mean, the heavy tanks are... Not that... Not that quick. The Felon Ball would do okay. I mean, bandits are fine, but they don't deal a whole lot of damage individually, and the Reapers have so much health that bandits cannot do all that much. And Avengers coming in as well to try to help out. Not going to do too much on that part, but still... Bandits, while doing what they can, are not able to tear this apart too easily, and a bunch of them go down to Phoenixes. Mobile anti-air wouldn't be a bad idea. You know, a couple Vandals or a couple Tarantulas. Actually, the Tarantulas would be a better option. Because the Venoms, he's got enough of those, but he needs more shield bot damage. It's just, this Screamer is taking forever to build up. I mean, Kmart, he's actually about economically even at this point because of all the raiding that lowry has been doing in the air. In fact, he's slightly behind now for economy. Lowry is pushing ahead. He's really showing he knows how to play the late game. Just going heavy Kodachi spam. And the thing is, like I said, heavy tanks, like, individually very powerful. And that's the thing. You gotta deal with that fact that each individual unit is very powerful. You have to take them out while kind of having minimal attrition to yourself. To minimize your own attrition because if you don't, they'll just end up repairing and being okay. Like, this Reaper, okay, it's not being repaired yet, but it could be. And if it was, that would basically mean that attack was worthless. All those bandits have died for nothing. However, a crab coming in here, and similarly, it is going to be... Well, it's quite tough. Basically got 12,000 health when it's hunkered down like this. Just needs to move in. The shadows have been destroyed. Kmart needs to move this in and start tearing apart Lowry's economy. And he also needs to start building some more mobile anti-air. He has none at this point. Almost entirely focused on bandits and venoms. I think he's not even focusing on his production. And there it comes in. A roach, and things, that's the best place the roach could have been, and still, it's just not a lot of damage. Now, like I said, there's that screamer that did deal a fair amount of damage, but it takes 20 seconds to fire one missile, or to get a missile to fire. And another roach coming in here to try to deal with these re these reapers. Not doing the best job. Trying to do what they can, but it's really tough. However, that roach, nice positioning on that roach, and the crab in a great spot, too, for dealing with defense, but it's still just so many reapers and none of them have died he really needs to focus fire but the thing is with roaches that's hard to do however at this point i think the defenders will finish no that's lowry's defenders it's lowry's base lowry is gonna just take this out no problem he the thing is, is that thankfully for well no lowry's commander is here he's gonna repair all these all of these reapers are gonna get repaired Kmart only has a few seconds to deal with it but at the same time they are out of position for defending the main base but that being said the main base isn't the concern. These Reapers are repaired. They're going to march right into Kmart's base, and Kmart has nothing to deal with them. Getting Recluses, so some defense against the the Reapers, but not a whole lot. Screamer taking out what it can one at a time for the air, and more air being built up, and Spider Factory as well coming in for Lowry to fight spiders with spiders. But, I really don't know why, honestly. I mean, okay, the crab's annoying, yes. I'll give him that. That crab is very annoying, and there is enough anti-air to stop that, so I suppose that makes sense. But, he doesn't have to worry about the crab that much. I mean, yeah, it's taking one choke point, but, really, I think, I'm best surprised he hasn't gone for a silo of his own. What does he build? What is he building here? Uh, not building anything. Interestingly enough, Lowry's not actually building anything. Rather surprising turn there, and like I said, Reaper getting healed up. All these Reapers were healed up. The Roaches died in vain. Those Reapers, completely fine. 
As if the battle never happened. Just totally fine. The only difference is that they couldn't have attacked sooner, but the Kamar are not really taking full advantage of that. Like, getting more hits off these Kodachis, that's not going to do many favors. Able to try to start getting rid of this Welder, but just with Venoms, all he's focusing on is Venoms, and that's not helping. He's getting some Recluses, but that's not enough. Even if it is the right unit, it's not the right time. It's been so long that he's been just going Venom Bandit Spam. This Crab getting repaired, getting off the high ground, and possibly going for an Assault. Probably trying to Assault this area here, trying to tear apart some of Lowry's economy. But Lowry's economy is very strong right now. He has so much Overdrive. He's got... Actually, maybe not that much Overdrive, but he definitely has a lot of Metal. Reclaim is what's helping him out a lot, really. But even without Reclaim, he has... He does have a metal advantage by at least 8 metal, and with Reclaim, it's almost double. He is well ahead. It looks like Kamar is going for his own Reclaim, but still... Kamar's only hope is one attack. This is the attack that he is banking his entire performance on right now. In this entire tournament, actually. If he... If he makes this, it's gonna work out, but... Kodachi's getting The first two getting stunned. Reclus is coming in from behind. Gonna try to do what they can to take care of the Kodachis. They are in a good position to deal with this. Ban is taking care of the first few Kodachis that were stunned. Welder is trying to deal with this as well, but they are not going to be that effective. Three Kodachis go down for free. That is huge. The Reckless is trying to do what they can to take care of this base, and it's not a bad job, but Reapers are coming in from the west. Nice use of Terraform, though. This is where the Terraform came in very handy. The Reapers cannot attack the south directly like this. They have to either go around here, which would be actually a very good idea, or they have to go over by the Newton line, which is a bad idea. And focusing very heavily, too heavily on the Crab, in fact, the bandits are able to, well, start dealing some damage. I mean, it's not great, but it's something. And, oh yeah, infiltrators, of course. That would be the best thing to use, be infiltrators. I mean, Kamar has that, too. He could, hopefully he thinks about that, that he has infiltrators that would just stun any of these units right away, leaving them wide open to be attacked. But no, he's not going for that, especially against this crab. Now he has to deal with the fact that Loudy has a crab, and Kamar doesn't. Kamar's crab is dead. And I think Lowry's commander, is he... He's still level 1. He's, I don't know what he's level 2. He might have a Lazarus device at level 2, but he's not got one at level 1, so it does not matter. Reckless doing a pretty good job here, getting away from the Kodachi. Not actually able to kill it, but frankly, it's not likely to happen. Kodachi just moves too fast. It's not going to easily happen, not with that many Recluses. Oh, we're getting rid of this laser turret. Just clearing up that hill, so both hills are once again clear. Both this hill and this hill, the center. And Rexus and Venom's coming into the main base, going straight for the heart of Lowry. Crab coming up to try to help out, but it's not going to be enough. There's enough damage will be dealt that this should be worthwhile. Windrunner's going down. Rexus are dealing a lot with this. Getting rid of one metal extractor, possibly two. Unfortunately, focusing too heavily on the crab. That's the wrong thing to focus on. The crab is completely not your threat. You need to get rid of the rest of the base here. This stinger is the threat, but does not matter. The crab just deals actually two crabs by the way and that gets rid of the assault oh man they could have dealt so much more damage it could have attacked the main base not focusing the crab I don't think that Kamar was focusing too heavily on that I think he was focusing on his main base once again and he was not focusing instead on this base over here and that is unfortunate because if he had focused on that he could have at least stemmed the tide from Lowry and then built up enough units so he gets rid of the reapers gets rid of the crabs he would have had the game but I think at this point it's too late Kamar's gonna have one last stand with these bandits let's see what he can do Reckless from behind the hill, trying to do what he can to help out. And, like I said, Bandit's great at dodging the Reapers, but the Reapers have got so much health. So much health that it does not work out too well for him. I'm just so unfortunate in the, the attack here. If you attack the main base, you could have taken out at least one factory, taken out all the economy, but at this point, it's just too late. And, once again, continuing along with getting infiltrators. And now he's an infiltrator. That he needs. And he has used one, actually. He's... Managed to stun out a crab. No support units, though. That is one thing. This infiltrator is still safe. It's out It's out and about. Just reloading. It's going to take a few seconds to do that. Probably about another 10 seconds or so to do that. But Venoms are not what you need to use to get rid of a stunned crab. Admittedly, it's a stunned crab outside, not in hunger down mode. So that is the best way to deal with a crab. If it's not hunger down, it's only 4,000 HP, not effectively 12,000. Only one second left for dealing with this. Oh, the Venom replenishing that nicely and this crab getting stunned out as well by the infiltrator I mean Kamar's doing a great job in this last stand and these reapers healed up once again these reapers have been lasting out a long time in this game mind you only a couple of them have made costs but still that's what repairs for and you really need to repair your units when you're playing as tanks 
An infiltrator in place. The, well, the stun crab is now unstunned and it's still hunkered down. Rex is doing what they can. Weaver's coming in to try to heal up. So these crabs will get healed up fairly quickly. And Lowry's Venom's coming in as well. It's gonna be destroyed by the Recluses, but that's still a lot of damage that could have been avoided if he didn't worry about that. And, okay, Racketeer's coming up. What we need to see in the first game, actually, but hey, it's something, at least. Reapers, however, take a lot of damage before they get stunned or get disarmed. And one of the Reapers has been disarmed. Not stunned, though. It can still move around. It can still avoid fire. And the east side, the two crabs, one of them has been EMP'd out, but it's not enough. Kmar has to retreat. Kmar at a massive military disadvantage. And a lot of it is invested in these Reapers and the Crabs. That is a huge portion of the military advantage by cost, but... Man, Lowry has made full use of it. He has not lost any unit pretty much entirely. And Kmar throws in the towel. That is game. That is match. Kmar has lost to Lowry. That is going to be... Lowry against... Well, the winner of Silencer and Kmar. And that winner is, in fact, Silencer. So, Black Dutchie won against Cubay, by the way, and Randy won against Lufhold, or Lufuf D. However, Randy is kind of the favorite to win this tournament, to point out. Silence are probably second favorite. Lowry is, if not second, well, actually, we'll see Lowry and Silencer. Whoever wins between Lowry and Silencer is probably the favorite to win, though Google Frog and Sackcloth are also very strong players. Fred, I don't think, has been in practice much recently. But anyway, in the next game, probably going to be Silencer and Lowry, though maybe Mighty Sheep and Black Dutchie, I'm not sure, but probably Silencer and Lowry. So stay tuned for that, and we'll be back shortly.